everybody! Welcome back to another one of our videos uh, and today's video is completely spur of the moment. As you can see we have got snow and I absolutely love snow and I know there's some of you out there in different parts of the world that'll be going that's not snow because you probably get like you know six feet of it but this to us is snow. We don't often get snow at all here in the southeast and I absolutely love it. So we decided to come on a little walk. This beautiful park is about a 10 minute walk from our house. So we have come out for our daily exercise and a little stroll in the snow. And while I was walking down to the park, I had a thought, it just struck me. I was like, could we make a soap with snow? So using snow as a water replacement. And I thought about this. And then I was like, possibly. I'm pretty sure that using snow as a water replacement wouldn't get past an assessment. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be illegal to sell, but doesn't mean we can't have a little bit of fun with it and do a soap just for us. So today I'm gonna to experiment. I'm gonna go home, collect some snow from my back garden, and I'm gonna use that instead of water. And I don't know whether the soap's gonna be scented or colored or you know what because it's literally just popped into my head so I haven't worked out the finer details yet but we're gonna create a soap with snow instead of water and just one more thing before we uh, go to the soap I know there is one question that is probably burning into your mind right now and that is where did she get that beautiful hat she is wearing today well I would love to tell you where I purchased this beauty but it was actually a gift from Father Christmas a few years ago, so I cannot divulge that information, I'm afraid, but I'm sure we can all agree it is truly stunning and I will not be getting lost in the snow anytime soon. So, I hope you enjoy today's snowy video. Let's make some snow soap. So I am home now and out on my balcony, and the first thing I'm gonna do is collect some snow. So I've got this little bowl here, and I'm just going to fill it up with some of this snow. And I think just pure, untouched snow always looks so, so beautiful. Just kind of like powdered icing sugar or something. So I'm just going to fill my bowl up now. So just using this untouched snow. <laughs> and the reason I'm using snow from home and not from out anywhere it's for a couple of reasons. One, it's much easier to collect it from home. And two, I know that this snow in my back garden, or on my balcony rather, is uh, untouched and hasn't been interfered with because nobody would want to make soap with yellow snow, would they? That would be uh, not pleasant. So I'm gonna fill up my bowl with plenty of snow, then I'm gonna take it downstairs and weigh it to the correct amount. So here we have a one bowl of freshly collected snow. And the recipe that I'm using today normally calls for 218 grams of water. And so we will be replacing that with snow. So I need to weigh out 218 grams of snow because when water freezes, it changes a volume size, but the weight always remains the same. So I know that 218 grams of snow is going to weigh the same as 200 gra 218 grams of water when it has melted back down. So that is always useful. I see a lot of people asking if ice weighs differently to water, like would 100 grams of ice way differently if it was water. No, it wouldn't. The volume would change, but the weight would remain the same. So you don't need to worry about converting things like that. So I'm going for 218 grams of snow in my uh, plastic jug here. And this is what 218 grams of snow looks like. Um, I'm gonna try and squish it down because that is very full. In fact, I think I might even pop it into a larger jug because I don't want to be sprinkling the lye when it's, when it's that full. So I'm gonna swap the jug. I didn't realize it was actually gonna take up that much space. Let's swap jugs. There we go, that feels safer now. So we have just got 
218 grams of lovely, fresh, clean, white snow. And I've now got our lye here. We've got 109 grams of lye. And I'm going to slowly start sprinkling it onto the snow. And I'm just going to do it very slowly, a little bit at a time today, because I'm not entirely sure how it's going to react because I haven't used it before. So we're going to take things slowly. I'd imagine this snow will probably start to melt away pretty quickly as the lye heats it up. But we'll find out. I obviously have got my gloves, my goggles, my long sleeves on. So let's uh, let's get sprinkling. I'm just going to start with a little. And just mix it in. Alright, and now I'm just going to slowly sprinkle the rest over. And you can see that it's melting that snow away already. And look at that reaction. You can see where that lie is. It is melting away that snow right away. So I'm going to use this spoon to just gently stir it in and combine it. And then I'm going to take it over to my sink once it's mixed in nicely and I'm going to set it to one side until it has reached the required temperature, which today I reckon will be around about ooh, 110 degrees or so. We're going to go fairly cool, or what I would call fairly, fairly low for this one. So our lye and our oils are now at temperature. We're actually at about 95 degrees Fahrenheit today. I think that's roughly about 34 degrees centigrade. Somebody asked me if I could mention centigrade temperatures as well. I think it's roughly 34, but you know, don't hold me to that. Uh, but yeah, 95 degrees Fahrenheit because this lye actually didn't heat up nearly as much as I was expecting. I was estimating it would get to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, um, but we ended up at 95. So that's fine. More than happy to be working at those lower temperatures today because I don't want this bar of soap to gel anyway. So we are going to pour our snowy lye water, which now has just melted back to uh, water, but we know it was snow. So that's the most important thing. So our snow, <laughs> i.e. water, solution with the lye is now going into the oils. And then we're going to bring it to a, oh, a light to medium trace today. We're not going to do anything fancy with the soap, no swirls or fancy colours. So a light to medium trace should do it today. So here we are at a nice medium kind of trace now. And all I'm going to do to this soap is actually add in some fragrance oil. I thought about colouring it um, and then I thought, no, we're going to leave it lovely and pure white to just, you know, signify the snow. We are going to top it with some colour, but the actual soap itself, we shall leave that beautiful snowy, creamy white colour but we're going to use some Silver Sparkle Fragrance Oil from Brambleberry. We have got 20 grams in here. I'm using Silver Sparkle because one, it smells absolutely beautiful and I love it. And since this soap is just gonna be for me, I am going to use one of my favorite scents. And two, Silver Sparkle just sounds like snow. It sounds like, you know, glistening snowflakes and, you know, well, Babbling, babbling, it just reminds me of snow. It sounds like a snowy fragrance. So we're gonna go with Silver Sparkle. Goodness me, that is going a bright shade of yellow. I did not imagine that. Um, I doubt that color will ca carry through into the final soap because I've used this fragrance before and it doesn't tend to discolor. Unless we're having some kind of strange chemical reaction with using snow instead of water, but I don't think we will be. So I'd imagine that this yellow will fade as the soap cures. Otherwise, oh no, we'll have yellow snow. No one wants yellow snow. <laughs> oh, God. Right, anyway, let's pour this into the mould now, shall we? Yeah, let's do that. 
So into the mould with our yellow snow soap. <laughs> and then we're just going to use some silver mica powder mixed with rubbing alcohol to spritz over the top of the loaf to add that kind of glistening effect that you get with snow because I think snow really does glisten so we want to go for that effect with this loaf. So for the mica sparkle for the top of the loaf I have mixed approximately one teaspoon of pure silver mica powder from Resonate with around about five teaspoons of rubbing alcohol in this little spray bottle, give them a shake and then we're going to spritz the top and hopefully it's going to turn it a lovely silver colour. I've just had a very quick wipe down there. I will obviously have a better one when I do the tidying up. But here is our snow soap. So it has got the silver sparkle fragrance, the pure silver mica top. It's yellow at the moment, but we're crossing our fingers. It's going to turn into a lovely white bar because that was my intention. I don't want this to gel. I want it to stay, hopefully, <laughs> A lovely pale white colour in the middle so I'm going to pop it into the fridge now to make sure it doesn't gel and then we shall take it out tomorrow um, let it firm up get it out chop it up uh, and just to reiterate this is purely a soap for me this is one that I don't think we'd legally be allowed to sell because I don't think we'd probably in the UK be allowed to use snow in soap the only way you may get away with it is if you were uh, boiled and filtered the snow, which kind of defeats the point because then it would just be water. So yeah, purely a fun soap, a little bit of an experiment, a little bit of a fun thing to do on a snowy day. And the soap is purely for me and is not going to be sold. Um, yeah, just thought I'd clarify that again. So we'll see you for the cut soon. So we are back with snow soap and it's actually been about 48 hours because just to be honest I couldn't be bothered yesterday. I was just having one of those days where I couldn't be bothered to do anything and the soap will be fine for cutting today. So 48 hours later we have unmoulded. The soap is not quite so yellow anymore. What I did actually realise after I turned off the camera the other day I realised that although I said I love this fragrance oil I haven't actually used it in soap. I've used it in bath bombs I've been testing and lotions and bubble bars and scrubs but it only struck me after I turned off the camera that I hadn't used it in soap before which is probably why I was so shocked by that yellow colour and I did go on to the Brambleberry website and it does say that it does discolour to an off-white colour so I think we are all good. I am cutting upside down today so that we don't drag that silver mica top through the soap. So let's get this cut and see how snow soap has come out. Obviously by now all of our snow has pretty much almost disappeared. That is how little snow we get and how quickly it goes. So here we have one bar of snow soap. We have got our silver mica top there. We have got a really pretty, it is an off-white creamy colour through the middle, but I think that's kind of reminiscent of a snowy day. It is to me, anyway. So here is snow soap. And as I said earlier in the video, it's just a little bit of fun. Yes, it's a little bit of a gimmick, um, but sometimes it's good to just do things that are fun. There doesn't have to always be kind of like an end goal. Sometimes it can just be fun. And that's what today's video has been all about. So these won't be sold. They will be used on me. I'm going to wait for them to cure and then I shall be using them. Um, 
But I hope you've enjoyed today's snow soap experiment. And we shall see you next Friday for our soap making video. If you enjoy our videos, please do give us that like, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. Let us know if there's any kind of fun videos that you'd like to see, kind of things that are purely for fun and for no other reason at all, because we like making fun videos. So if you guys can think of any, let us know and we may do them. Thank you for watching. We shall see you all next time and have a lovely week, everybody. Bye. Woo -woo.